So in this video I want to talk about the fact that I, sh I just bought a new projector and I want to go over the reasons why I chose the projector that I chose and uh, why I didn't go for one of the newer projectors that are out on the market that are, you know, that range from the, the Epson LS12000 which everybody is going crazy over uh, that costs about $5,000, the Sony ES5000 which is $6,000, the JVC MP5 which is seven. dollars and then you go to the NZ7, which is $11,000. So it's a huge jump in price. You got the Sony ES6000, extremely expensive. And I think that's the number one reason why I chose this projector. First of all, the projector that I bought is the Epson 6050UB. I actually got a really good deal on it. I got it used and uh, I paid $2,500 for this one. Uh, the unit had 410 hours on the lamp. So it came with an extra lamp, which was sealed and the chief mount which was sealed as well so I feel like I felt like it got a really good deal you could actually buy these things right now on uh, that are refurbished they, I think there's a company called safe and sound that sells them for like $2,900 I considered getting one of those for $2,500 I got I think I got a really good deal I got the actual unit plus the the chief mount and the uh, and the uh, extra lamp which was gonna it's gonna keep me in business for a long time so I'm gonna go for, through a couple of reasons why I chose this particular projector I looked at all the options that were available. First of all, I cannot afford, not that I can't afford an, uh, an $11,000 projector, I'm talking about the NZ7. I always compare it to uh, when I was like uh, 21 or so, I think I, I bought a Mustang, right? A Mustang GT had the V8, it was a 1997 GT, uh, and I paid $10,000 for that car. So to think that I would pay $11,000 for a projector if I wanted to sell it, let's say a year or two later, I'd probably lose half the value of it, or easily. It's sort, it's sort of, you know, the depreciation is sort of similar to like a car, especially the bold ones. So number one, yeah, the, the price. So yeah, the, the cost. Me and my wife were dealing, we're building this new house. There's a lot of money going into this thing and I had to kind of keep my costs in check. I had to kind of like be a little, I had to exercise a little discipline here. I couldn't go crazy with all the costs. I'm not only making a new one home theater, I'm making like three or four. Um, so I'm making the main home theater, which is, which is where this is going to go with the projector. But I'm also like building a rec room home theater. So I'm buying all new speakers for that. I'm buying all new speakers for, uh, for a family room home theater, which is all, it's going to, it's going to be pretty cool. It's going to have all in ceiling speakers. I'm going to get an OLED TV for that room. Plus I'm getting a bunch of in-ceiling speakers and I'm getting a, a Control 4 system, which they're they're really not cheap. So if you've ever tried like putting together a Control 4 system, they're, they're very expensive. So cost, is, cost played a very big factor. When I was looking into the projectors, I was considering, I was, you know, kind of between the MP5, the JVC MP5, the Sony ES5000, and the Epson LS12000. I wanted a black projector. I, I had been living with a white projector since for about eight years, and I just, even when I bought my Epson 5030UB like eight years ago, which is which still works great, by the way, at that time, I, I kind of wanted a black projector, but it was like more money, and uh, back then I, haven't, I had even less money than I do now, so I just, I needed to make it, I needed to like make a compromise again. So this, this case, I was like, I'm not compromising, I want a black projector, so I had to rule out the 5050UB, which was white, so I could have gotten that one brand new. So I'm gonna go through the reasons why I did not choose the Epson LS12000. Number one, I think it's really cool. Uh, the pros for that projector, it's laser, it's super bright. Uh, it's still a pixel shifter, but it actually has better pixel shifting than the 6050UB, which is this one. Um, I think it's four times shifting. This one's only two times shifting with an asterisk because there's a rumor out there I'm going to get into this a little later, but there's a rumor out there that a firmware update uh, made this projector pixel shift three times, three times instead of twice. You know, it's a rumor. Uh, I've seen a bunch of people in forums talking about it. I don't know if it's true. There's no official announcement from Epson about the about the firmware. It's I believe it's firmware version 1.3, which upgraded the pixel shifting, according to some folks out in there in like uh, AVS forums. The biggest reason why I chose against the uh, the Epson LS12000 was the fact that it did not have 3D. I know 3D is it's a dead it's a dead format. Most people don't even have a 3D collection. I kind of do. I don't. I have maybe like 50 3D movies. I just sort of wanted to have the option to do it. I wanted to have the option to to play a 3D movie if I wanted to. 
now they have the Avatar: The Way of Water movie. Maybe there there'll be come there will be some kind of a 3D resurgence. You know, maybe they'll really start releasing more movies in 3D. It's possible. I just wanted to have the option for 3D. You know, and I'm not the only one that like felt that Epson made a bad move by like removing 3D when they've been religiously including 3D in their models since my I mean my projector has a 3D. I believe the 5020 had it. The 5030 definitely has it because I have it. The 5040 had it. 5050 and of course the 6050 has it, but the newest round of projectors does not have it. So I think that was a big negative for the projector. Most people don't care. Most people have moved on to to uh, Ultra HD, to to HDR uh, sources, and that's that's fine. When I do watch a, a 3D movie, it is really cool. The format works really well on a big screen. You got 120 inch plus screen, and 3D looks really really good. Watch Avatar, Gravity. They all look really good. And uh, now you can actually buy players. Zidu, Zipidi, there are other players that you can actually rip your 3D movies and play them on your network just like you would, just like you would on like Plex or something like that. I wanted to have the option for the 3D. So that pretty much ruled out the LS12000 and I'm gonna throw in the Sony ES5000, which I also hear is a very, it's a very nice projector. The cons against the, the uh, Sony ES5000 was that the lens shift was manual. I have a man I have manual lens shift right now and it's a pain. I, I want it I really like the fact that you can use a remote control like with this one uh, and just move the lens around and you know position it. It's a it's kind of a pain in the ass. I'm aware that you once you set it up once, it's typically okay. It does shift around, believe it or not, you know, I sometimes do have to kind of like push it back with this one. It's I don't know what happens, maybe it's the, the heat cycling or something, it just moves it the teensiest little bit so I gotta kind of play with it every like six months or so maybe every year so the Sony had the manual lens shift the manual zoom uh, the manual focus I wanted to have something that I could just use the remote control I did like the fact that it was laser and I did like the fact that uh, that it was a native 4k uh, projector I've seen a lot of really good videos a lot of positive uh, uh, reviews on that Sony unit that has you know they're incredibly sharp tone mapping is pretty good not as good as JVC but it's good. Well, finally, that left me with the MP5. The MP5 is $7,000. It's almost approaching the price where I'm like, I can't, I can't spend $7,000 on a projector. It's, it's just a piece of electronic equipment. I just want to watch movies on my screen. So then I started, you know, I started like thinking, you know, what are my alternatives? Should I just go, uh, should I just buy the 5050 UB and just accept that it's a white projector? I didn't want to do that. Like I said, I wanted a black projector. So I decided, well, what about the 6050? Can I get one of those? So I start looking on eBay and I find a couple of posted like for 2800, 2700. Uh, there was one that was about 20, about $2,000, but it was, a, it was an auction. That one ended up selling for 24 or 25. You know, out of the blue, I get an offer from the seller who was selling this one, who had it listed for 20, I believe $2,800. And he offered it to me for 2,500. And I'm like, damn, I got, I'm gonna just take it. This is the solution to my problem. It all worked out. So I get the projector here. I have it hooked up right now. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna install it in my theater. In this theater, I don't want to do it myself. I don't want to take the risk of, you know, dropping the thing and then I'm out $2,500. I'd rather just pay somebody to do it. It's probably simple, and I just, I just don't want to go through the trouble of, you know, removing this projector, installing this one, and then moving. We're gonna move in like five or six months and having a you know, put the old one back because there's a possibility that this, the, the old 5030 UB will stay in this room for the new owner if they want it. You know, I'm not, uh, it may, I may convey the projector and some of the, some of the equipment in this room, including the chairs and stuff for the new owner if they want it. I wanted to talk about the remote controls real quick. This, this is the 6050 UB remotes. It has a few more functions. There's a button for HDR, a uh, button for lens, image enhancement, and they kind of don't even address, they don't really don't need, oh yeah, so there's 3D format, there's a 3D format button down here. Um, here they have a, so this is the 5030 UB's uh, remote control, very similar. It's a good remote, I like the fact that it's backlit. I've always liked that, I think uh, it's a good unit, but you know, obviously there's just a super resolution button, which is similar, which is kind of similar to image enhancement, but there, obviously this doesn't have pixel shifting. So overall, I'm uh, happy with the remotes. Uh, uh, I, I like them. I've always, I've always liked this remote. Uh, it's not the, 
it's a good, it's a big chunky remote, but it, again, it's easy to see at night, especially uh, since it's backlit. Another thing I want to talk about uh, really quick uh, about this projector is the fact that it doesn't, that it has a lens, the automatic lens cap feature. I just love that. Uh, I, I have that in my projector and I've always liked it. I, I don't know why other companies don't seem, don't want to implement it or something, or you think that Sony and AJVC, they can figure something out, um, not have your, your lens exposed to dust all the time. I think that's, uh, that's honestly another plus. Another thing I like about the Epson projectors is the fact that it has the automatic lens cap. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, you know, I don't know if, you know, probably wouldn't outweigh a really good picture quality, but I, you know, as, as far as what I've seen, the 6050, it does a really good job and I'm quite happy with it so far. But yeah, lens cap, you know, it's a, it's simple, but it, you know, uh, it's a tiny little feature that I like and it's much quieter than my uh, 5030 UB's uh, lens cap. It's like, it's it, it, the 5030 has a much louder whirring sound. It's like, Meh. this one's like, dead silent when it's opening. You don't even notice that it's opening up. So I don't want to go through too much of this because I know, you know, this projector has been out a while, but obviously you got two HDMI ins. I believe they do both are HDMI 2.0, uh, which is fine in my case. I mean, how, there aren't a lot of videos that are over 4K60 and that's fine. There's a USB-A port for uh, like firmware upgrades and that kind of thing. Ethernet port, I'm not quite sure what, what that is for because I, I, when I got this thing, I would try to update these, the firmware like online, but apparently this doesn't support that. You have to actually actually go through the USB port to do it, which is fine. Uh, you have a VGA port for you know, legacy, legacy connection to a PC. And I believe this is the uh, RS-232 port, which I believe is for uh, like home automation, that kind of thing. Uh, I believe that's the uh, is the IR sensor for the projector. That's basically it. It's pretty simple. Obviously, it has some feet. Can't really see them too well, but you can adjust the feet down there. You have a power button there. Uh, a few more. If you actually want to do some more, there's a menu button in here. You know, some some like a D-pad kind of thing. And that's about it. I think this is the port where you would, uh, where the low, where the actual bow goes. If you were going to replace it, that's where you would service it. This is the where the filter ha it lives. Uh, very simple. You just pull it out like that. I already inspected it. It looked brand new. Basically, I already looked at it. Looks nice and clean. Really, nothing to do there. Super simple. This is the motorized uh, lens cap, which love this feature, and pretty much only Epson provides that these days. JVC, Sony can't seem to provide that. I said that earlier in the video. I mean, these are like the certifications. It's 4K, HDR, Control 4. I'm actually gonna have this connected to a Control 4 system. 3D, love the 3D, big fan. Uh, hardly ever use it, but love having the option for it. There it is, uh, Go Cinema 6050 there. So there's the menu here. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I have the dynamic range here. The lower the number, the higher, uh, the brighter it gets. You know, honestly, I think uh, this is, again, this is very similar to what uh, Epson has with the uh, with its current models, the LS, the LS 11,000 and the 12,000s. It's a similar system. This has HDR10 and HD and HLG. I don't believe it has HDR10 plus. So that, I guess that is one negative for it, but uh, there isn't really that much HDR10 plus uh, out, out there. Uh, content, I, I should say, I guess, I think Prime has it, but uh, you know, um, it is, it's fine. Um, I can live without it. And again, this might be a projector I have for two, three, maybe four years. Again, I have that extra bulb. So, and I like the fact that it gets super bright so I can run it. Um, so I can show you the, uh, I'll get, so there's the projector intro. Now it has 414 hours because that's, that is, uh, that I bought it with 410. I put three hours on it, just testing it and stuff. And, you know, just nerding out on it. But the first thing I did was updated the firmware. You see the, the number up there ends with a uh, 104. The, it had a, the, it had version 1.2 and I, up, I updated it to version 1.4. Uh, so hopefully that includes that, uh, extra, you know, 3x pixel shifting, which I heard of for 24 hertz and 30 hertz content. 
So you can do front projection, front just front ceiling, rear, rear ceiling. You can do a bunch of different things with it. You got that keystone. I think you even get that you can even do uh, if you go into so if you go into the Im Im image enhancement. I have it currently set to the preset three. So it's you know uh, each preset kind of sharpens it up a little more. You can see the super resolution thing, which is you know somewhat conservative at four. I think in my current projector I had it set to one, but you know, again, that didn't do any, it was just a sharpening uh, algorithm or something. But this projector, it actually, uh, actually does pixel shifting, which actually, uh, actually does something uh, more than just like a digital sharpening thing. Since it's projected so small, uh, 100 inch, I had it set to eco, but I can take it up to medium, it goes a little brighter, and then high, definitely ramps it up, ramps up the fan a little bit but nothing too bad. But Eco, I mean, for like this size screen right now, I'd probably use it in medium, uh, but I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna be projecting it up to 165, 165 inches in the new theater. So I might have to run it at high, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Another reason why I like this projector was it had that 2600 lumens, which is way more than a lot of the uh, competitors out there. But yeah, this is the on-screen menu. Let me give you my first impressions on the projector. First impressions is this thing is super bright. Uh, I think this thing uh, outputs 2600 lumens. The contrast ratio is incredible. Uh, I think I hooked it up, I put on like Elvis, uh, the Elvis uh, uh, 4K Blu-ray on it, and I tested it out. And I don't know what people are talking about the tone mapping because I have it set right in the middle as far as the tone mapping, uh, the HDR tone mapping, and I think it looks fine. Um, again, I couldn't, uh, where this projector sitting right now, I can't get the, I can't fill my entire 120 inch screen. It's, I'm getting about, you know, maybe close to a hundred inches, maybe a little less. Uh, but when I get up really close to the screen, I can tell that the, the pixels look really small. So I don't know if there's any truth to that whole three, three time, the, the three times pixel shifting, as opposed to like just the two that this is supposed to have. There's some compelling evidence if you look for it. Some people say that the that 3x pixel shifting that they said was implemented on this projector, it only happens with uh, 24 hertz and 30 hertz content. So, you know, given that the possibility, and you know, it does look pretty sharp to me. It looks way sharper than my current projector, which is just 1080p. So for now, I'm happy. I've saved a lot of money. I'm gonna get a really really good projector in my new theater. Um, I may keep it for two, three years. If I'm happy with it, I may keep it for longer. My current 5030 UB, like I said, I've had for eight years. I've been tremendously happy with it. And uh, I can recommend Epson enough. I uh, never had any issues with it. And uh, so I went, I, w I went ahead and trusted the, the company again. And uh, I got the 6050 UB. Those are my reasons for getting it. You know, in the future, I'll go through another talk about, you know, its performance stuff. Maybe give us a, a short demo. That's the projector I chose. Uh, what do you think? Do you think I made a mistake by not buying one of the newer projectors that are out in the market? Do you think that, uh, do you agree with me that Epson made a mistake by not implementing 3D in their projectors? I guess for most people, it's probably just fine. But yeah, those are my reasons for buying uh, the 6050. Let me know if you have any uh, questions about it. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Oh.